law of self-defense states that the force you use to protect yourself must be reasonable and proportional to the threat that you face. Hello folks, I'm Andrew Williams and this is another edition of the Fedora Lawyer. Now, the self-defense claim is one of the most common strategies used by attorneys to defend you in court if you ever get charged with assault. The law defines assault as any of the following. Assault is when you intentionally, knowingly, or recklessly cause bodily injury to somebody or you threaten somebody with eminent bodily injury. Now, how can self-defense work for you as a defense strategy if you're charged with assault? In cases where you're the one causing the bodily injury to somebody else and you want to make the claim of self-defense, the other person is probably fighting back. This is when you claim self-defense. But you can only claim self-defense if you can prove that the other person was trying to attack you first. However, if you pick the fight with the other person and the other person fights back and then you proceed to beat the crap out of them, you're not going to get anywhere with a self-defense claim because you're the one that provoked the fight. So the assault against you has to be totally unprovoked for you to use self-defense. So the bottom line is you need solid proof that the other person was trying to cause you bodily injury and you reacted to the attack. That's how to use the self-defense strategy in court. It has to be a situation in which a reasonable person would have feared for his safety. If a person says to you, I'm going to kill you and your whole family right now, that would create a situation where you would make the claim of self-defense. However, it has to be eminent, which means immediate, right now, so that you need to do something right now to stop the threat. Some things just don't qualify as eminent. Like, for example, offensive or provocative talk that can, don't really contain any threats. Also, threats that have been abandoned. In other words, you can't attack a person because he said he was going to uh, harm you two hours ago and then you go looking for him and he's abandoned the threat and he never really followed up with it. You, you can't go after him and then claim self-defense for something he said an hour or two ago. Also, you need to know that if someone assaults you, but then stops assaulting you, you have to stop as well. It's kind of strange, but it goes like this. If somebody starts a fight with you, and then you get the upper hand, and you start beating him up, and then he quits, you have to stop as well. It's not self-defense for you to continue to engage in violence against that person once he's thrown in the towel. And finally, the attack from the other person must be unprovoked. In fact, if you're the one threatening the other person before that person attacks you, then he might be able to make a claim of self-defense against you. All right, well, that's pretty much how uh, self-defense works. Clearly, self-defense is much more complicated than that, and it also depends on the facts of any particular case because they're all so different. But at least it gives you a basic understanding of what self-defense is and its limitations. Uh, I do hope this information was helpful. If it was, hit the like button for me. I plan on making lots more legal videos uh, on all sorts of topics for you. If you're interested, you can watch either one of these two videos to get you started. You can also visit my website at andrewwilliamslaw.com. For now, this is the Fedora Lawyer signing off.